Hi, good evening. How are you tonight? Great. Okay, great. Um, you know, today is April the 4th. What day is today? Qingming, yes. Today is the official day of Qingming. So I thought I, I skip uh, from uh, where we end last week, but got right into the uh, last 24 words, which is Sang San Nian Chang Bei Ye, Ju Tu Bian, Jiu Rou Jue, Sang Jing Li, Ji Jin Cheng, Shi Si Zhe, Wu Shi Sheng, which is actually on page four of your Di Zi Gui textbook. I thought this uh, is very appropriate uh, for today's occasion. Um, April the 4th, 2013, this year, is the official date for Qingming. Although we visit our deceased relatives' graves every year, but I believe a lot of us do not understand the meaning of Qingming. I think it is something that we just do. You know, every day we get together, we buy the papers, we offer them, uh, some of them offer them meat, some of them offer vegetarian uh, food, uh, fruits, flowers. And when we went to the, uh, the cemeteries, we found that actually it was very uh, crowded, especially the old cemeteries. But I heard even the, um, the, the more up-to-date cemeteries, they also get very jammed during uh, the, uh, the two weeks before the actual date. And many of us who work away from uh, our hometown would travel back to our hometown to visit our ancestors or our deceased relatives' graves. And I found that a lot of people's faces are actually very gloomy. Not because they were sad, but because of the traffic, of the long lines of traffic. And uh, sometimes it's so narrow, and yet people will park on both sides of the road. And worse still, they, they do not follow the one-way traffic. Sometimes you have traffic coming on the opposite sides. And this was what happened to us this year that we have both cars coming from uh, the opposite side and neither would want to yield. So I saw that and I actually went down and take a look at what happened. And I ended up as uh, one of the traffic controllers, you know, asking them, you know, back, I mean, in Malaysia it's called Gostan, but Gostan is not in English, by the way. A Gosan is a Malaysian word, it's not an English, but we say And I was actually uh, very impressed by the uncles, the elder gentlemen, the uncles. Uh, they wear, short, wear sh the, the shorts and uh, very dark looking and they were standing on the side and say, that means that you know, if you don't yield, actually, you know, it reminds me of Chinese culture, isn't it? We have to yield, remember? Last week, because Tai Bo yield, he helped his nephew to become the future king. He yield. So at that time, you know, the, the, we were asking people to yield. And so eventually the cars were starting to back off. Right? Uh, except one car. It was an elderly gentleman. He didn't believe uh, and he didn't want to, uh, you know, back off. He said, I'm always there. So he got off his car and he, he was walking towards the front. But he did not take his key out of the car. So one of the younger gentlemen actually got into his car and backed off his car for him. <laughs> I hope he could find his car later on. So eventually the traffic, you know, go ahead. It also shows, you know, some of us are a little bit self-centered. We forgot that there are, you know, tens of cars behind us. And we were just thinking of ourselves. Uh, at one junction, 
uh, cars are supposed to turn right to go out. But then there were also cars going straight in order to go to the cemeteries. So there were two cars. Because of them, they blocked the turn to the right. And when we went there and asked them to, you know, uh, go, you know, continue to go, but they say they cannot go, they have to wait. And they didn't want to move to the right because they said the grave is just over there. And uh, it was quite a, quite a scene at that time. And we saw them, they were like really stubborn just because of two cars. So eventually, you know, people have to ask them, no, you go in. If you don't go in, all the cars at the back cannot go in. So you is good. Okay, you then, you know, do not be too self-centered. Always you and you'll find that, would, would you like to be scolded by a lot of people so you like to be praised by a lot of people? Which one is better? Even though your price is to go one more round, okay, you may curse and, and, and yell and so on, but you know, the price is good. So eventually they came to the census and they go to the, the site and let the cars move, move on. So to some of us, going to this, the cemetery was just a formality. It's something that we do. If you don't do, maybe people will say we are not good children. But what is more important actually, we must understand the meaning of Qingming. That is a day when we commemorate our diseased parents or grandparents. Now, the uh, festival actually falls on the 104th day of the winter solstice, which means that from December 21st, you count about 104 days. So usually it will fall on April the 4th or April the 5th. This is also the day, if we have the four seasons, it's also the marking of the dawning of spring. You know, the coming of spring, so everywhere will be bright and clear, and the flowers will come. Xing hua, tao hua, ying hua, which we don't have here. That means the apricot flowers, the sakuras, okay, and uh, the, uh, the uh, different, different kinds of flowers. You can see all of a sudden they come out during this time. So Qingming, uh, despite the sorrowful, it's also the day when people come out to ta qing, Ta Qing means feel the ground. Okay, feel the ground. Qing means clear, bright. Ming means bright. Qing means clear. It's clear and bright. The day where we come out and enjoy the, the clarity and the brightness of the spring, early spring brings us. But in Malaysia, because Malaysia is a tropical equatorial country, we have the same season all year round. So it wasn't too thrill for us. It was sunny and hot. So all of us would go out very early to avoid the sun. Of course, everybody else was doing same, thinking the same. So we kind of crashed into each other. And the teaming has a lot of stories where it came about. One of the stories which uh, we kind of uh, uh, think is interesting is the Tang. Xuanzong, Emperor Xuanzong, okay, in 732 AD, the year 732 in the, during the 8th century. So that means about 1,000 uh, 1, uh, years or 1,000 years ago. Now what happened was at that time he noticed that people were spending ostentatiously expensive uh, ceremonies, okay, in honoring their ancestors. So he had to put a stop to that. So he said, okay, he declared that respects could be formally paid to ancestors' graves only on Qingming. So the observance of Qingming became firm you know, after that. Now why during Qingming? Because that was a day when every day was started to to grow. It also coincides with another festival called Han Shi Jie, which is the cold food day. The cold food day is uh, on that day in China, 
okay, in older China, they will not switch on, or well, at that time not switch on, burn any fire to cook food. That's why it's called cold food day. All the food have to be steamed or prepared cold. 叫寒食节. It has a, a great story behind it. Why Han Shijie? It was during the uh, the spring and autumn period, Chun Qiu Zhan Guo de Shi Hou. There was a king, Jing, Jing Guo. I mean, in the, uh, in the kingdom of Jing, there was a big struggle for power and one of the uh, the princes he ran away and he wandered with a group of very close ministers for 19 years he was wandering off escaping his his fate and during one time he was very exhausted they didn't have any food so his minister well, one of the uh, the officers who ran away with him called Jie Zi Tui. He saw his uh, duke. Uh, they were all called duke, not called Wang, because they were not exactly emperor. They were just lords. Okay? So when Jie Zi Tui saw his lord almost dying okay, without food, he prepared some meat soup for his, his lord. And his lord drank the soup and he recovered. The soup was very tasty. And he thanked him for that. And he was uh, a bit puzzled though. So he asked uh, Jie Zi Tui, where did you get the soup from? Where did you get the meat from? Because I don't see any, uh, you know, uh, any domestic uh, animals here, and I don't see any wild animals here. Where did you, where did you get the meat? And he found out that it was Jie Zi Tui who cut out a piece of meat from his thigh in order to feed him. So years and he was and the king the uh, the lord was very very appreciative of it. He said, "I will always remember you for that." Then when he went back to Jing Guo and recovered, okay, his power, recovered his throne, he rewarded everybody. But for some reasons, he forgot Jie Zi Tui. And Jie Zi Tui at that time had gone back to his hometown and stayed with his mother because there were a lot of power struggles in the imperial court and he didn't want to have anything to do with it so he went back and stayed with his mother so when other ministers reminded uh, Jing Gong uh, about Jie Zi Tui he said, Aiyah, how could I forgot him? I better go and find him but he, they couldn't find Jie Zi Tui and his mother where are they? So one of the smarter uh, officers advised him, why don't you burn the forest? We burn three sites and open one site. They will definitely run out from that site. Why don't we do that? I'm sure he will not you know, uh, kill himself or allow his mother to die in the fire. And the Lord thought, hey, that's a good idea. So they set the fire to the forest. Now, supposedly it was uh, that Jie Zi Tui asked his mother that the Lord is trying to force us to come out. What do you think? The mother said, well, what do you think? 
do you want to run or you want to stay? And Jie Zi Tui said, well, the imperial court is very, very, um, very risky at this time. I really don't want to go and be a minister. So the mother said, whatever you decide is fine with me. And in fact, an officer should have integrity. Okay. So it was said that they both decided to hold on to each other and let the fire just come in without running. And as the fire was set in the forest, they look, the king and his ministers and his soldiers look at this fire and nothing, nobody came out. So after the fire subsided, they went and looked, looked for Jie Zi Tui and his mother and found that in the willow tree there were two kind of charred bodies and they found that they were actually burnt to death and the Lord was very very sad very very uh, regretful and then in the willow tree he found that there was something like almost like a piece of paper that, that part wasn't unburnt so he took out the piece of paper and there was a poetry written by Jie Zi Tui, which goes something like that. He said, It is very sorry that I cannot be by your side to be your minister. But I should hope that if, my Lord, if you still remember me, I hope that when you remember me, that you will become a good king. That a good king who know how to rule, who care about the people. Dan yuan zhu gong chang qing ming. So even though I'm now a ghost in the ground, I shall hope that when your Lord believe, uh, when your Lord remember me, that you will become a good Lord indeed for the people. So the dude was very sad, so he ordered on this day, and for three days, no fire is allowed to cook food. Then the next year, he went back because he felt very sorrow, sorry for what he did. So the, the Lord went back there and he found that the willow tree have young shoots came out from the willow tree as if you know life was once again you know blossoming so he thought maybe Jie Zi Tui's soul is not dead maybe Jie Zi Tui's soul and his mother have actually gone to the heaven so they have this practice during Han Shi Jie to uh, put the willow branches in front of their family so the Cha Liu So you find in some places in China, they will have willow trees, willow branches, you know, plucked and put uh, in front of their house, and they will use flour to make little, uh, uh, what do you call, swallows. Swallow yan zi, because jie zi tui, he zi is yan zi. Okay, so meaning that yan zi, he, they are still alive, you know, marked by the, once again, the lively willow tree. So they're not, that in fact his loyalty has has been paid. So Han Shi Jie is young like that. So when Xuan Zhong they all set the date for Qingming, it's just right after this to commemorate the the disease, to commemorate what they have done. So that's one of the uh, the stories. Now in here it says Sang San Nian Chang Bei Ye. When we visit the cemetery, during the Qingming Jie, we will clean up the tomb, clear away the grass, and repaint the tombstone, as well as offering. But when we look at the picture, do we see that person who is dead now? What has that person done for us? And what has that person hoped we can do for our future? 在我们看到这个墓碑上的那个照片的时候 
曾经在我的生命当中，鼓励过我什么，也期许过我什么。For instance, my father always hoped that I could be a teacher. So now I'm a teacher. And、uh, I don't know what your parents want for you, but you look at them. You get ask yourself, what have they hoped we can become one day? And 弟子规则：三三年常悲业。Why some the three years we have to mourn for them for three years, always feeling sorrowful for them? Why three years? Okay. And why do two bian? Why the、uh, living quarters have to to be changed or Change in the sense that not to adorn them with renovations or move into big extravagant houses. And Ji Chu Pian has another meaning in the ancient time, because in the ancient time the children would actually build a hut next to the cemetery and accompany the disease for three years. That's the older days. They would put a, build a hut next to the cemetery and live there for three years. That's why Ju Chu Bian, where the places where they live, is changed.、Okay? Now we can also interpret it as no lavish renovations,、okay? no、uh, very extravagant, you know, parties being thrown. So like Jiu Rou Jue, no alcoholic drinks, no meat, meaning that you keep your lifestyle to the most. Uh, uh, thrifty. Okay, so the simplest, you know, to show that we are mournful of our parents. So, but why does these three years come about? So, two thousand five hundred years ago, Confucius student Zai Wo once asked this question. Zai Wo or Zai Yu, he was also the、uh, the student who fell asleep in one of、uh, Confucius' lessons, and、uh, Confucius shook his head and said, "Xiu Mu Bu Ke, Diao Ye." That's him also. That means a rotten wood cannot be used to carve anything out of it. But Zai Wo, interestingly, is known for his ability to speak. Ability to to debate. He is Yan Yu. Ah, he is like Zi Gong. He is Yan Yu. He is very good with speaking speeches.、Right? So Yan Wu asked Confucius, "Ah,、uh, because Zai Wu thought three years is too long. He thinks one year is enough. So he asked his teacher. He said, 'If a superior man.'" Abstains from propriety and music, because a gentleman is supposed to practice、uh, li 跟乐 He said, "Well, if a gentleman, you know, stop practicing、uh, li and then stop practicing music for three years, wouldn't cause his his practice to、uh, stopped, then that would not be too good. But in one year's time, you can see well." The grain will start spring up. The old grains will grow, go away. New grains will come up, and then you know woods will be you know chopped you know four times. So I think one year is is enough. So Confucius asked him, "If you were after one year to eat good rice, is it in the northern part of China? Rice only come once a year. Am I right? The rice only." Will grow once a year, not like here. I think here we have at least two crops. They only have one crop a year, so it's very hard to obtain rice. So Confucius said, if you after one year to eat good rice and wear embroidered clothes, very fine clothes, would you feel at ease? 就说一年呢，你就可以吃到好的米，穿好那个很那个很这个奢华的这个绸缎，你会。呃，过得去吗？你会过意的去吗？在我说
可以啊，会，没问题 ，no problem。Yes, I would. I would eat good rice and I would wear embroidered brocade. There's nothing wrong with it. So Confucius said, "If you can feel at ease, do it. 如果你觉得可以的话，那你可以，那就去做吧。But a superior man during the whole period of mourning does not enjoy pleasant food, which he may eat, nor derive pleasure from music, which he may hear." He also does not feel at ease if he is comfortably lodged. Means if he can live comfortably, you know, at a place. Therefore, he does not do what you propose. Because during the morning period, a gentleman does not taste anything good because he is so sorrowful of the passing of his his parents. But if you feel at ease, yes, you may do it. So. Zai was was pleased with the answer, and he went out. Then Confucius said to other students, he said, "This shows Yi, which is another name for Zai Wo. Yi is not benevolent. It is not till a child is three years old that he is allowed to leave the arms of his parents. Now you all have three years old before. Wasn't that true?" Did you dare to leave him, you know, from your arms before three years old? Every minute you have to look at that baby, every second you are worried.、Okay? Even though you have a gaga to look after your babies, even though you have grandparents to look after the baby, you still worry you know, for the first three years. So Confucius said, it's not until after three years, then the parents will, you know, be a little bit feel a little bit. Safe and allowed to leave the arms of the parents, and the three years mourning is usually observed throughout the world every year. The three years. That's why、uh, in the、uh, in ancient Chinese Chinese saying, 三岁定八十 Upon when you reach three years old, we can almost tell what you will be like when you were eighty years old. Because in the first one thousand years of your life, it's the most important days of your life. What you were taught, what you eat, what you smell will stay with you for the rest of your life. Okay. Now, now we have to flashback a little bit. Is it true or not? But I don't have any memory of my three years. Right? Do you remember what were you like when you were a baby? Of course not. Do you remember what were you like when you were three years old? Of course not, right? So how could you say it would decide my fate when I turn 80 years old? Okay. So now we have to flash back a little bit. So when did we start having memory? I remember four years old. Okay.、Uh, actually, a bit three years old. Why I had that memory? Because I remember my sister propped me up on a, a table. And he put my arms together, and he said, "She said, 来，我跟你讲，我教你讲话。I forgot what she taught me, but I remember she held my hands together and asked me to follow her. 哎，爸爸，叫爸爸，妈妈。So I was, I was, I was talking away, you know, following whatever she said. Now." The reason why the 1,000 years count is that subconsciously, in your subconscious, you are being actually educated. 就是在你的意识形态当中已经受到教育了。你有没有注意到小孩子哈？小孩的眼睛啊，特别灵。我讲有最近最新的一个外甥 ，because I have eleven brothers and sisters. 我现在很多外甥跟侄女啊，最近的哈。啊哦，没有啊，外甥的孩子、啊，真的恐怖，现在有点。最近出了呃，好像是一才几个月吧，六个月吧哈、哦。我就看到他的眼睛哈、哦，很灵的，他就一直看，一直看，一直看。Now almost all of us were going there. You know how when we saw babies, babies are cute, right? We all go there and wonder. 
and they check, they check, they check. They will choose the one they are comfortable with. So I found that the, the, the person the, he liked were actually, most of them were males. And males, like male safe, 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 safe. Then uh, for ladies, he will look, look. Look, the ones who look like his mother. Okay. So subconsciously, actually they are doing all kind of, receiving a lot of signals. And my brother, who was a joker in the family, kept holding one of his legs to do the karate kick. Karate kick. Like, you see, adults, we don't realize everything we teach the kid will go into his, his little mind. Who knows, maybe one day when he can stand up, the first thing he would do is <laughs> kick somebody. Okay, so, and their mind is so pure that every signal that they receive is like, you know, they're absorbing everything like sponges. They only express it, you know, only when it came out much later. Okay. So in these 1,000 years, we take good care of the children. Okay. You must, but of course, you all have missed that period. But don't worry, okay, you still have a chance. They are the last one, seven years. Seven years, by the time you're seven years old, your whole life will be determined. Okay. So, if you like to read when you were a kid, you will like to read now. If you don't like to read when you were a kid, you will not like to read now. Okay, read, reading habit is something we cultivate when we were young. So, interesting, uh, I heard somebody told me that uh, according to a survey, the average um, uh, Malaysian on average word, on average, would only read one page per year. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. No? I'm the average, okay? So I look at the whole class, only one head. So we have about, about 40 people here. There's only one head like that. So I know the survey was right. <laughs> yes, on average, apparently Malaysians do not like to read. So our government, uh, Angkasa Puri, if you, if you drive past Angkasa Puri, Angkasa Puri have this huge billboard words that say what? Something like uh, encourage us to, to read books, to have culture. Okay, it's something that would, when we're young. So the three years is almost universally accepted. Okay, by the time your kid is four years old, she's in this great class already. Okay. So universally uh, accepted, three years is at the time when our parents would not let us you know, go away from the arms and the attention. So, um, the Master Ching Kung said, the three years morning is usually, is universally observed throughout the land. Did Yi has three years of love for his parents? That means, does Zai Wo has three years of love? Not that many, just three years of love for his parents. For all the things that our parents done for us, can we not mourn at least for three years? Is it too much to ask? So there were even more rights you know, in the past to observe the three years. For instance, we were Dai Xiao San Nian. Um, but I saw there was once uh, it was fashion. Okay, it was fashion to to tie a black band on your arm, but it's actually not very good. In the past, you only do that when somebody died in your family. It's not a fashion statement. Okay? So you have to tie xiao, your san yan cai, tuo xiao. Now, I think immediately after the funeral, we take it off. Now, why in the past they they do it for they did it for three years because. When you have that xiao, that little piece of cloth on you, they know that you cannot attend parties. You cannot go to any joyous, like weddings, or even baby uh, showers, okay, any, any ceremonies that is joyous, they know it. You don't need to 
explain. Yeah, and you don't have to feel sorry about that. And it also cautions, you know, uh, ourselves as well as others that I am in the morning period. Please be understand. Please be understanding, okay? and help me to do it. But now I don't know why. As soon as the funeral is over, we take it off. And in fact, during the funeral, we also don't wear it, right? We don't wear it, do we? I hardly hear see anybody wear it. The uh, the, the ones that I have attended, almost like it didn't mean anything, and uh, just do it quickly. You know, do it quickly and get it over with. Okay. So from here, we, we know that what are the proper ways to attend to our parents? How to actually uh, fulfill filial piety? And here, Xiao Jing, the book of uh, filial piety, mentioned five things that we could do. Now, I write Chinese because it can express it very well. Okay? Ju Yang. Bing Sang Ji. It means that during uh, normal times when you leave, okay, in the living quarters, yang means uh, to nurture them. Thing is when they are ill. Sa means when they passed away. They means parents. Ji means the, the ceremony, the rite, the memorial. So in these five conditions, when they are still living in our house, and as we offer them our uh, respect, nurturing them, and when they get ill, or when they pass away, or when we hold a memorial for them, in these five situations, 自己 means we must do the utmost. The utmost of what? Ju ze jing qi. Zi qi jing. That means when they are still alive, when they're still alive, we must do our best to show our respects to them. Chu bi gu fan bi mian. When we go out, we tell them. When we come back, we tell them also that we have come back. And Chen Hun Ding Xing, make sure that they have retired, then only we uh, go to sleep and make sure that we actually rise before them. Okay? But it's interesting, isn't it? Now is it's always the older people waking the younger people up. According to the ancient time, it's supposed to be the younger people waking before the older people. Yeah, we have some young staffs there who live in the dormitory. Do you wake up first or the older staff wake up first? They're looking at me absolutely puzzled. And the three gentlemen at the back. When they give you that look, you know the answer. <laughs> One look, the other, 
The third one. <laughs> so we all know the the answer, okay? But in the ancient time, the younger ones have to actually look after the the older ones. In this case, you know, the children look after the the parents. So with utmost respect. And as we, you know, we, we live with them, we support them, what kind of attitude should we have? Happy, joy. So young. Very joyful. With a joyful heart. Okay, as we live with them, we serve them, we serve them happily. Okay? And not, huh? You know, this kind of attitude. Right? But always be joyful. Now, being the as they you know, what should we do? We should be actually be attentive. You not say worry, but we should be concerned. You literally it means worry, anxious, but here I think concern is more appropriate. That when they are ill, we should be concerned that their illness, what type of medication they need, and sometimes maybe it's illness in the in the mind also. A lot of older people are anxious in here, not so much in physical. Okay, but when they are much older, they do have physical, you know, uh, weaknesses which we have to be very delicate about it. Okay, now, we get very so stubborn, okay? Now, do you know that all of us are sick? Each and every one of us here is sick. 我们每个人都有病,你相信吗?谁没有病的,请举手。你觉得你没有病的,请举手。有吗?我都不敢举啊。You know why? If we are not sick physically, we are sick over here, mentally. Okay? Every one of us is, is sick, is ill. Now, when you are sick, you take medicine, right? You say you got a cold, you take medicine. You take once, right? And then your cold recover. And then next time you are sick again. Then you take medicine and you recover. The third time you get sick, you take medicine and recover. Would you ever tell yourself, or somebody should they tell you, hey, you take this medicine, you should recover forever and ever and live happily ever after? <laughs> Nobody, right? But how come when people come to us with problems, we always feel that, the first time we ask them what to do, they will recover. They will recover maybe one week and then get, you know, grumbling again, complaining, complaining again, and we think, hey, you shouldn't complain. My medicine is good. No, just remember, all of us are, are sick in one way or another. We need to talk to people to sort things out, to cure what is bothering us. So all of us must be a doctor. Remember, you are a doctor, but you are a patient also, okay? So when you are ill, you consult your friends who are doctors, and if your friends are ill, they, you become doctors. So, now, if we can charge for every single complaint that we saw, we'd be very rich, isn't it? Just like the doctors, uh, you go in, they, they will charge you a lot. But we are human beings, we are good people, we don't charge people. So we might have earned a lot of money, but you know, we don't charge. But in actual fact, yes, you are a, a doctor. You can help to cure other people's sickness. Okay? Now, so be concerned with what they are ill about. Okay? Then, sang zhe zi qi ai. Ai means sorrowful. Okay? Because for this person who we thought might never pass away, whom we thought will live forever, suddenly has disappeared from our lives. And we feel this loss, this remorseful 
for them. So when they passed away, we feel the, the, the loss for our parents because they're no longer with us. And perhaps even some of us are regretful that we should have done something that we have done before our father or our mother passed away. And I should hope that we don't need to uh, live with that regret in our life, especially when your parents are still around. I hope that you do not have to live with that regret that you should have done something. We have a, a father who uh, shared with us, he was about 40 years old. He told us there is a porcelain cup in his family. He bought this porcelain cup for his father because his father was ill. He, uh, the father asked the son to buy him a porcelain cup, so which he did. He bought the porcelain cup and put the cup in his house, in, in his own house. He did not give it to his father. He thought, ah, yeah, wait, 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 wait. And he waited. He did not know that his father would pass away so quickly. And he never got the chance to pass the cup to his father. He said, I, that is the most regretful thing I ever did. Had I done it earlier, had I not waited, my father would have got the cup before he passed away. Okay. The long story is like that. Okay. So don't wait until you know they passed away. No matter how sorrowful you are, you may never be able to have another chance okay, to repay your gratitude. And one of the ways we pay our gratitude is to commemorate every year during the death anniversary. And at this time, during the ceremony and the memorial, we must be solemn. We should not laugh or joke you know, during memorial. So that's why in Qin Shu Zi Yao, Code 89, please correct, I think it was written there 86, but supposed to be in this edition is 89. Okay. So that's why if we can do these five things, okay, we would have truly fulfilled our duties to our parents. Okay. It's only when we can complete these five things. Okay. And lesson from the past, as last week we talked about King Wen, King Wu, okay, how they respected their fathers. Now King Wu was the son of King Wen. When King Wen was uh, not feeling well, King Wu attended beside his father in full regality. He dared not even you know, dress casually okay, beside his father. And his father would take one meal, King Wu also took one meal. If King, Wu, uh, King Wen can take two meals, King Wu would take two meals. He did not dare to eat more than his father. Day after that, day, after half a month, 15 days, when King Wen recovered, then only King Wu stopped. That for not even one day, he will forget his father. So throughout his life, he never overwrite his father, when his, he and his brother Zhou Gong overturned the despot King Zhou, he was still following his father's teaching. Be good to the people. Be good to the land. So that is why when Sang Jing Li Ji Jin Cheng Shi Si Zhe Ru Shi Sheng When after the memorial, the funeral, we have done you know, our utmost solemnity in co commemorate their death. We should serve the death, honor the death as if they are still alive. 
even though they have passed away, we should honor them as if they are still alive. And how did some of the great people in Chinese history did that? So I chose this story uh, by the name of Xu Ji, a man named Xu Ji. Xu Ji, the story heading is Xu Ji Bi Shi, which is in your handout. Uh, roughly, literally translated, Xu Ji avoided the, the rock or the stone. Now, the historical background, if you can see, look from your, your handout. Uh, this uh, story, okay, all occurred between the two emperors. Actually, between three emperors. One is Emperor Shen Zhong, and second one is Emperor Zhezhong, and the third emperor was Hui Zhong. He lived through the three emperor's rules. Xu Ji lived from 1028 to 11 and 3. What is interesting about him was, not only that he was a very filial son, he was also deaf. He became deaf, that means long jaw. He long jaw, tang But even when he was deaf, he was appointed as a professor, professor of the magistrate. And even when he was deaf, he did not take up any government uh, post. He knew a lot of things. His knowledge was extensive, all through reading and, and writing okay, in the uh, second half of his life. And he lived quite a long life. He lived 76 years, which was rare during that time, during the Song Dynasty, uh, uh, about uh, 11 to 12 century ago. And Xu Ji studied under Hu Yuan. And who is Hu Yuan? Hu Yuan, or known as Hu Yizhi, he was one of the, uh, the great scholars during the Northern Song period, Fan Zhongyan. Fan Zhongyan's two sons were his teachers, uh, were his students. Fan Zhongyan led his two sons to study with Mr. Hu. Mr. Hu was a, a great uh, teacher, and he was also the teacher of Xu Ji. And when the first time Xu Ji was introduced to Hu, Hu teacher Hu found out that uh, Xu Ji had a tendency to tilt his head to one side, like that. And that. So he said, Mr. Hu said to Hu Ji, keep your head straight. Okay. Do not let it become crooked. 不要让它歪斜. Well, we all see crooked anyway. What's the big deal, right? But the first day, they got called An Ding Xian Sheng. Ah, his name, ha, Hu Yue, called An Ding Xian Sheng. Ah, head, ah, not to be crooked on So right away, Xu Ji, oh yes, yes, I will. I will never make make this mistake again. Since then, he would always sit straight. He, he knew that if he keep his head straight, he will also keep his heart straight, upright. So whoever asks him, what is the secret of self-cultivation and doing people, he will say, that means upright. That was from his, his teacher. Now, Xu Ji passed his exam, uh, his last exam. They have to go through a lot of examinations. He passed his uh, last final imperial exam at the age of 39 years old. And he was asked to take up a post in the imperial court, but he declined because he said he had a, he had a hearing problem. And he retired to his hometown, but he continued to have extensive knowledge. 
And then a few ministers close to Emperor Song Zhezong recommended Xu Ji to be a prefecture professor at the age of 58 years old. That shows that how much they you know, value uh, Xu Ji's uh, abilities. And then he later recommended to various government posts in charge of census registry, taxes, warehouse, and general office, all required integrity, okay, no corruption. He was one of the, the officers who were not corrupted. And then he was granted the name Jie Xiao by Song Huizhong. Jie Xiao, Jie is you Jie, means integrity. Xiao is filial piety. He's a man of integrity and filial piety, and Song Huizhong gave him this honor, honorable name. So this story, the original hymn was Xu Ji Lu Mu Ku Bu Jue Sheng Yi Fu Ming Shi Bi Lu Er Xing. Lu Mu means, this is what I said uh, just now, they will build a hut beside the deceased parents. So he built a hut beside his mother's grave. His father passed away when he was three years old. It's interesting is that a lot of great men's father passed away early. Huh? Who else could you remember? Kongzi father passed away when he was hardly three years old. I think Mengzi's father passed away uh, when he was about also three years old. Xu Ji's father passed away when he was three years old. Sakyamuni's mother passed away, I think seven days after he was born. So I think those of you who are single parents, you have great hopes, don't worry. <laughs> These Greek men were all brought up by single parents. And Huang Xiang, Huang Xiang's mother passed away right before he was nine years old. So yeah, hey, you know, not bad. So they are showing something to us. Now his father passed away when he was three years old. And his mother taught him how to read Xiao Jing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you have to teach your children to read something, you want him to read comics or read Xiao Jing. <laughs> Take the opportunity to teach them to read good books. Right? So when his mother taught him to, uh, to read Xiao Jing, for some reasons, Xu Ji will cry. He hears Xiao Jing's words, this child is the most crying. He cries every time. Because every time, he reminds him of what he should do when he is a person. He cries. He is crying. He cries. 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 这个这个孩子来报恩的 ，He will always help him in everything he could. He would attend to domestic chores by himself personally. So when he uh, was going to his imperial exam, okay, he would also take his mother with him. And uh, not only he would take his mother with him, he would also attend to his mother's you know days and night. Now, when we were having examination, who took care of our needs? We went to school. Who took care of us? Our parents and mothers, right? I often hear, "Oh, sorry, I can't come to your house because my child is studying for the SPM. My child is studying for the UPSR, right? What happens when the mother is not there? The mother is not there. 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 他考试为什么你要陪他？要的要陪他的。But、uh, no, Xu Ji was the one who pay 母亲哦，不会说哎呀，母亲我要考进士啊，我不能陪你了，我要 fully focus on my study。我们就这样的哦，妈不能帮你，因为我要考试。哦，等我妈我说考试，好好好好好。你看又骗了妈咪，只要考试，妈咪就不会来吵我们，是不是？ 
惭愧啊，看到这些故事。When we saw these these stories, I、uh, feel so. I mean, so sorry for my mum. You know? But that's why when my mum became older, I was very nice to her. <laughs> so don't worry, okay? And、uh, so, when by the time he passed his final exam at 39 years old, he was still not married. So people ask, you know, you know, we Chinese, we always like to ask, right? 你结了婚没有？是不是？他总是问你，你结了婚没有啊？如果你说有呢，他就问你你有几个孩子；如果你说没有呢，他就下去问你呢，为什么？你说没有结婚，他就问你为什么？ Okay. So exactly he was he he faced the same question a thousands of years ago. So I said, how come you're not married?、Yet? So、uh, he said he said uh, uh, if I choose the wrong woman, he may make my Mother ill. Ah, if I choose the wrong wife, it will make my mother sick. Why? It will make her sick. It will make her sick. Okay. So people say, "Choose a good wife to be able to remember three years." This wife is very important. The next time, if you have a chance to have a daughter-in-law, make sure you choose or ask your son to choose very carefully. Do not until the time you have to tell your son you choose your wife or me. No, don't, don't go and reach until that situation.、Okay? So and Xu Ji was worried about that. If I chose the wrong woman, you know, she may make my my、uh, mother, you know, ill. So I'm not thinking about that. And He was also thinking about going to become an officer. Then his mother passed away. So because of that, he he accompanied his father,、uh, mother's grave for three years. And every day, every day he sobbed, he cried. You know, he felt the sorrow of losing her mother. And it was said that you know, when he sobs, you know, the dews, the sweet dews fall. And even the plants, the roots, they get all tangled together. It shows, you know, how long had he been been there. And he also have a very strange behavior. Xu Ji would not use any utensil that make from rocks or steel. 什么东西有这一个？这个字的石 means rock or stone. He will not use anything that has this rock、uh, utensils and、uh, roads that are paved with rocks or stones. He will not step on it. He said, every time I look at stones or rocks. I rem, it reminds me of my dad, because 我爸爸名字叫徐史。我用它就好像在，在好像砍我爸爸的那个身体这样。我不可以用。我如果踏在这个石头上，我好像踏在我爸爸的身上。So every step, you think about I can't do that. So some people ask him, you know. It is very hard for you to follow this act. What happens if you, you know, should go to a place where there's only a rock path, only a stone path? What are you going to do? Well, I said I still won't do it because it will makes me feel like I'm stepping on my father. So he's truly one. You know, in Qin Shu Zhi Yao Quote Ninety One, 一举足不敢忘父母，一出言亦不敢忘父母。Uh, you know, Qin Shu Zhi Yao, ninety one. Here it says, and this passage was quoted from Li Ji, the Book of Rites. I dare not forget my parents in every step I take, and I dare not forget my parents in every word I say. As I remember my parents in every step I take, I will choose the right course of actions in preference to a devious shortcut. 
That means I will always choose the right path. I will not choose a deviate path just because it is shorter. Okay. If there is a boat I can ride, I will not choose to wake across the river. That means I will not choose to jump into the river and walk across or swim across if there is a boat. All for the fear of putting this body given to me by my parents at risk. As I remember my parents in every word I say, I will not use abusive language and cause revive. Revive means very vulgar language to throw back at me. Which means that I will not use abusive language. I will not use vulgar language on somebody else first. Because if I do that, they may do the same to me. Or if they do that, even if they do that to me, I will not return, you know, revile, revile is vulgar, 出口啊,不好听的话,我也不会报仇. Why? Because if they abuse me, it's like abusing my parents, because this body is given to me by my parents. Okay. Shaming me is like shaming my parents. That's right, and follow, not subjecting, my, not subjecting myself to indignities, that means xiu And causing my parents shame, these can be considered as filial piety. So if we turn to this quote, quote 91, i read some Chinese, because Chinese sounds so beautiful. Okay. Now why shouldn't we hurt our body? Because this body was given to us by our parents. So that's why in quote 84, in Xiao Jing, quote 84 in the Qun Shu Zi Yao, again, quote 84, and open that up with a little bit of Chinese. Uh, we have more over there. You need one here? Uh, Mr. Lee, we need uh, yeah, some more. You can share. This, this is a great book, by the way. Uh, you can read one quote a day. So, and you can read it for 360 days. Then you rest for five days. Uh, it's a great book. Uh, it's great uh, as for, it's both entertaining, good to learn English and Chinese this way, and also we learn some wisdom from it. And also it is us who translated this with the help of many, many people. Right. So, now, we had, we uh, turn to quote 84. It says here, 身体发肤受之父母不敢毁伤笑之实也 It means here, our bodies to every hair and every bit of skin are given to us by our parents. And we must not presume to injure or wound them. Li Shen Xing Dao Yang Ming Yi Ho Shi Yi Xian Fu Mu Xiao Zhi Zhong Yan. This is the beginning of filial piety. But what is more important is also when we have established a virtuous character by the practice of the filial course, so as to make our name revere in future ages and thereby glorify our parents. This is the ultimate goal of filial piety. That means that if we do not do things that shame our parents, 得有伤, 宜清修, 
You do not do things or hurt people that shame our parents. This is also filial piety. And to do the greatest filial piety is actually to leave a name to our parents. Uh, I remember my, one of our, our teachers, he, he was giving a lecture in uh, Alostar. He mentioned how he was brought up by his father. His father was a very responsible uh, working class from China, and they didn't have too much. He only had a sister. He said, uh, my father would take back some leftover papers from the factory, the ones that were thrown away. He said, my father would come back and help me to wrap my textbooks with those papers. So I learned how to wrap my books with those papers because of my father. And his father would do two shifts to support the family. And he said, when one of them uh, misbehave, both of them have to kneel down. That means if the sister make a mistake, the brother had to accompany the sister to kneel down. If the brother make a mistake, the sister has to accompany the brother to kneel down. He said, and uh, what do they kneel down on? You know, 错一版啊. 哥哥犯错,妹妹要陪着跪. 妹妹犯错,哥哥要陪着跪. 那跪什么? 跪错一版. 错一版 means the washing board. And the washing board has two, uh, two parts, right? One is where you have the, the wedges. One is flat. He said, if the offense is serious, we nail the, the wedges. If the offense is not too serious, we nail on the, the flatter side. Okay. 如果犯的错大呢就跪那个尖尖的那个地方就是洗衣搓衣的那个地方犯的错不大呢就跪在那个比较平的地方所以呢我常常跟我妹妹讲你啊你不要犯错你犯错哥哥要陪你跪我妹
And apparently, Kong Jia, the 后代，夫子的后代，没有一个败家子。Is it possible? Do you can you guarantee 你不会有败家子吗？你你敢不敢担保你不会有败家子的？不大敢，是不是？哎，你们要有信心才可以啊。<笑> Have some confidence. Now that your children are studying Di Zi Gui, you are also studying Di Zi Gui. So next time when anybody asks you, 你敢不敢担保你家没有败家子？ Well, have confidence. It's okay. It's only the beginning of the course. So, three years down the road, ten years down the road, you have the confidence. 夫子家没有一个败家子。孔德成的老师哈，还是雪茹老人。你看，当时紧张的怎么样哈？当时他还在妈妈的怀里的时候啊，肚子里的时候，父亲就。就就就,就去世了，当时很紧张哦。如果出来的是女的，孔家就没有嫡传的的孙子了啊，所以就很紧张哈。当时又没有 scanner 的哦，又没有 ultra scan、ultra sound 啊这些东西，那女人就一直在那边天天就在担心啊，全家整个孔家族都在担心啊。那时候在台湾。所以，当那一天他生出来的时候啊，蒋总统啊，放了三圈的警察跟兵啊，围着那个屋子啊，为什么？怕人来拐带，把孩子拐带走了。那时候这么紧张，一生下来是儿子啊，他们就很高兴的啊，地传的长孙啊，还是有。现在好像到八十代了吧。So how could for so long for two thousand five hundred years 没有一个败家子吗？很难想象哦。所以你看夫子积的德是多厚啊 ！You can see how thick Confucius' merit, you know, has he accumulated. 积善之家必有余庆。So if your family accumulate merit. Your generations, your future generation, your children and grandchildren would live prosperously, virtuously, and you will not have a black sheep. So have confidence. Even you now has like, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yes, have confidence, huh? Okay. Now, and talking about giving a, a name to ourselves. We must actually first be filial ourselves, especially as parents, because children learn from us. Uh, Mr. Teacher Chai uh, cracked this joke in one of his lectures. He said, uh, "You know, a father uh, always tell his son to obey. You give a word, you don't obey. He always ask, demand his son to obey him. So one day he came home." And found his son, hold, uh, what do you call it? Strang, almost strangling the chicken. Okay, 握着这个母鸡的颈哈、哦。你说呀，讲啊，讲话呀。So he was imitating the father doing the the same thing, but he couldn't hold, strangle anybody, so he was strangling the chicken. <laughs> 你说啊，你说啊，说啊。Okay, and your children are holding, you know. The back of your cloth, I mean your clothes, and they ask you, "I ba, to 哪里啊 Where are we going?" And you say, "I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where we're going." Well, you must know where you are going. 人生，你要去哪里？人生最怕是后悔。好，所以在这个清明的时节啊，从我们思亲，这个。追思，这方面知道我们的上一辈是很不简单，很不容易。Especially the、uh, the Southeast Asian Chinese. Now most of them came to Southeast Asia because there were wars back home. They couldn't find a job. They were going to starve to death. 
and they travel a long way to come to Nanyang. We forgot how hard they have worked for us. And we always seem to that there is tomorrow, and there is tomorrow, and there is tomorrow. 人生两件事不能等 There are two things in our life we should not wait. One, 一个是行善不能等 To do good things, we should not wait. 哎呀,改次啦,改次啦 等我有钱,等我做工,等我老一点,都是 all these excuses. No, don't wait. 第二件事情,尽孝不能等. To be filial to our parents, we should not wait. Um, I'm going to show you a video to, uh, to kind of help us to remember. 叫做天堂的 午餐, a lunch in heaven. Okay? So we will watch this short video.
，等会儿能吃上一顿您给我做的饭呢。哎呀妈，等您老了，我天天做给您吃。First, when I uh, watched it, I thought, wow, finally, you know, he cooked a, a meal for his mom. Then I realized that his mom has passed away. Okay? So, uh, yeah, 等你老了以后，我再煮给你吃。他妈妈已经吃不到了。好，所以这个是天堂的午餐。不要等到我们的爸爸妈妈老了。才来尽孝每一天呢都这五个居则尽其敬雅则尽其乐病则尽其忧这个上则尽其癌记则尽其言 day as if it's a new day and that we pay our utmost gratitude to most of them. Okay. Thank you very much. With that, I'll end tonight's session. And uh, 祝你们夜梦吉祥, sleep well. Thank you.